What we're going to do today is make a mash that comprises 100% malt wheat. And my malt wheat, I have simply purchased, it is a Cargill product uh, from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And I'm simply going to grind it in my hand cranked um, roller mill. And what I have ground already is a total of 8 kilograms of the malt wheat or approximately uh, 17 pounds and we're going to now take that and add it to our mash kettle and bring it up to temperature. Now the water that I'm using is simply uh, municipal tap water however I have passed it through a 10 micron carbon block filter and all I'm trying to do there is remove any semblance of chlorine and I'm also trying to remove any of the typical odors and tastes that one would attribute to tap water. Um, the pH of the municipal tap water uh, is around about 6.8 and so what I have been typically finding is after I add my grains which are slightly acidic the pH uh, drops to around about 6 or just under which is the ideal pH range then for the naturally occurring enzymes in the malt grain to uh, perform at their ideal uh, performance levels. The one question that I routinely get is how much water should one be adding to the mash kettle? I use a 4 to 1 ratio so in this particular recipe we're using uh, 8 kilograms of grain as I said um, 8 times 4 is 32 therefore I will I have put in 32 liters of water into the mash kettle my experience has shown that a 4 to 1 uh, ratio gives me a soupy enough mixture that um, the enzymes can travel around and do their thing and um, I don't really have to add a whole lot of sparge water then at the end of the process either. So 4 to 1 mash ratio, simply take the number of kilograms of grain you're adding, multiply it by 4, and that will give you the number of liters that you have to add of water. I should also point out that during the mash, I will be adding a little bit of artificial enzyme. I do realize that malted wheat uh, in and of itself does have naturally occurring enzymes in it. However, all of the literature that I keep reading indicates that malt wheat has uh, less or fewer naturally occurring enzymes than a malt barley. Therefore, to simply speed things along and to ensure that I get a good and thorough conversion, I am going to be adding um, OptiMash, which is an alpha amylase artificial enzyme. I will also be adding Ultra Firm, which is an amyloglucosidase artificial enzyme. Both of these, as you can see, are from White Labs in California. Um, to this particular mash of uh, 8 kilograms of grain, 32 liters of water, I will only add 5 milliliters um, of each of these. And that is sufficient, in my experience, to ensure that I get a proper and thorough conversion of all of the starches into sugars. So we've now added our grain to our hot water. As I said, the uh, dough in temperature was 50 degrees centigrade. And um, one thing I've discovered that works extraordinarily well for mixing grain is simply one of these paint paddle mixers, which you can buy at any hardware store for around about $10. And that just attaches to any handheld um, uh, drill, be it a DeWalt or otherwise. And uh, As you can see, it works extraordinarily well for mixing the grain and, uh, and keeping everything uh, agitated in the brew kettle. Okay, so we've now got our conversion of our starches into uh, fermentable sugars. And I took a reading on my refractometer. And what I'm getting in the mash kettle is a reading of 20 bricks, uh, roughly converted to... Uh, something that we're more familiar with as, as home brewers that would be a starting gravity of around about 1080 
so I should get some fairly decent alcohol uh, from this ferment. So we're going to let the uh, existing liquid in that uh, brew kettle uh, filter its way through the grain and along the way we'll be giving it a little splash every now and then of some hot water to uh, sparge and I'll be collecting um, around about 20 maybe 25 liters of uh, liquid and at that point we will then cool it down and proceed to eventually add our yeast. Okay, so we've completed emptying our liquid out of the brew kettle, we've added some sparge water, we've captured uh, over uh, 25 liters of, of liquid. Um, what I'm going to hook up now is my uh, immersion cooler, which is simply a, a wound length of copper tubing. You can buy these at any home brew store. If you're a home brewer, you've, you're well versed in how these things work. They're not ideal, but nevertheless, it will cool this uh, liquid down. What I'm looking to do is cool it down to around about 30 degrees centigrade, and at that point, I'll be uh, adding my yeast. Now what we're going to do in order to uh, ferment this is we're going to be adding some distiller's yeast and this material comes from White Labs in California and this is actually their vodka strain of distiller's yeast and it actually comes built with a little bit of amyloglucosidase enzyme in it to uh, assist with the, uh, with the ferment. What we've weighed out is 11 grams of the yeast and what we're simply going to do now is hydrate it into a little bit of warm water and once we have added the yeast to the water. We'll let it sit for probably 10 minutes or so to wake up and at that point we'll be pitching it into our fermentation bucket. And here we can see that we now have got fermentation on some of the um, pails that we had started uh, 24 hours ago. All I do when I do my ferments is I leave my, my uh, sparged material in its fermentation bucket once the temperature is underneath 30 degrees centigrade, I add the yeast and I drape a garbage bag over the pail, tuck it in around the bottom edges of the pail. And as you can see in these uh, instances, the bags have puffed up quite readily. Fermentation with distillers type yeast um, for these mashes will take around about seven days, uh, typically longer than what you would normally encounter with a ordinary home brewer's yeast. And the reason for that is Distiller's yeast is very much different than a brewer's yeast and it will deliver much higher alcohol contents for you. Once the fermentation is done, in what will be part two of this video series, you will see me take this liquid, load it into the hillbilly still and proceed then to do some distillation runs. So in the meantime, as we wait for fermentation to complete itself, thank you very much for taking the time to have watched this little video. And this is how very, very simple it can be to do mashes at home uh, using distillers type yeast and a little bit of synthetic enzyme to make the preparation material for your home distilling exercises.